Morning, YouTubers. So this is going to be part two of a settings comparison. So in the part one, if you haven't watched it, I'll put a link in the description. Go and watch it. We screwed around with voltage plus or minus a few volts to see what would happen with penetration. Well, in this episode, we're going to tackle wire feed speed. So essentially, we're going to keep the voltage all the same, and we're going to manipulate wire feed on this plate, do a bunch of welds, and then we're going to cut it in half, etch it, and see if wire feed in and, in and amongst itself will affect penetration. So you can hedge your bets now and see if you're right by the end of the video. So let's get into it. So as a quick overview, I'm gonna start out with a baseline of 320 inches per minute, 19 and a half volts. That seemed to work pretty good on the previous test for voltage. So we'll start there. And then these are all the values we're gonna be running for wire feed. I am not gonna be changing the voltage. We are keeping it right at that level and just altering wire feed. So let me go get the current bush started up and let's get the welding. All right, so I had a couple issues. One was setup was welding and the generator killed out on it, like right in the middle of the weld up here, just died out. And Well, turns out the CO2 meter, because it was in the back of my truck, built up some CO2 in the area and then it tripped the meter. So, oops, my bad on that. I just moved the generator and it ran fine. Then I got all of these done, got about an inch and the welder wire stopped feeding. And I'm like, oh boy, what's, what else is gonna go wrong today? Well, turns out I was out of wire. So another, whoops, my bad. That's what I get for having five hours of sleep. So anyways, I, I actually had to drive to two Menard stores to get the same wire, this 030 by the same brand. So I ended up picking up more of that. So we are A-OK. -okay. And then I ran the final beads here at lower settings. As an interesting thought, the last weld here, I ran the same settings as this, and I did circle E movements, and you can see there's more of a ripple pattern to see if the penetration is different with this versus this. Now, one thing I'll say that kind of st stands out to me is these beads really all look pretty much like a bead of caulk on plate. I don't see much difference in height. The width is all very similar, and that's kind of what I expected, but who really knows, you know, maybe the penetration inside is different. But uh, we won't know unless you test. So the, as I always say, the proof's in the pudding. Well, let's cut it in half and find out what the pudding says. Well, finally got it cut up. As you can see, it's running a little bit late, getting dark out, so squirrels and the bunnies around here by the railroad tracks it's past their bedtime so it's a good thing I'm wrapping this up but let's take a look at what we got here so the numbers depicted here are inches per minute on the top and meters a minute on the bottom for you metric fans so what jumps out at me right away is basically the penetration and the welds look very very similar across the board now that one for at 380 is a little bit obscured by the uh, reflection, I guess, in the plate, but it's basically the same. There's ever so slightly a difference at the 400, I would say, where the penetration is a wider section, but realistically, all of them are very similar. As the wire feed increased, the weld seemed to be slightly more like round at the top, so, or wider, I guess. It's kind of like an oval shape if you look at it, but not really that significant. And in person, the penetration is, is basically identical in depth. 
what this really shows to me is kind of that over the years I've been told a lot of things when it comes to MIG welding, one of which is, oh, it's wire feed that drives penetration or it's voltage. Well, based on the testing so far, it's really neither of them. It's a combination of the two, and it's also what shielding gas you use that determines penetration. And it's also worth noting that the settings I'm using aren't what the welder really recommends for quarter inch plate. And you have to remember that I was using 030 wire for this and that's generally not recommended for quarter inch plate. It's what I had on hand because I didn't have the proper drive roller to run 035. Well, guess what? I now have the proper drive roller and in the next uh, probably two more videos, I will be diving into 035 versus 030 wire for penetration on quarter and we're going to experiment and see if there's a difference there. But really, I mean, from a, a showing what happens, I mean, you can't really argue that a 400 versus 320 wire feed, that's a huge jump and it had basically no difference in penetration or really the width and weld. So pretty interesting. Now let's look at the slower wire feed. So this is a significant drop in wire feed from 400 at the most to 290. Now the two that are 290, the W is weave. And no, you're not seeing double. Literally, there's two separate penetration areas where it melted into the plate. Kind of looks like a W. That was unexpected. I would have expected to see a profile more or less with a rounded bottom for penetration, not two literal identical uh, little peaks. So that was very unusual, very unexpected. And the penetration, again, is very similar. I mean, if anything, I would say that the 290 and even the 300 is starting to get pretty shallow, like in width of that little bit of penetration, and the bead almost looks like it's just sitting on the plate, and it probably is. On an actual weld, I think that these would likely break off if you stressed it, like on a fillet weld, because I have a feeling there'd be no penetration. And that's something that I'll test coming up, so we're going to definitely get into that and look at it. Now, I'll be honest, I've never done much in the way of cutting and etching on MIG welding, and I'm not really much of a MIG welder, to be honest. I'm more of TIG and stick. But the penetration profile of all the MIG welds I've cut and etched so far on this channel are not really what I expected, I guess. It's a lot different than what you see with stick welding. With stick welding, you tend to see a real rounded bottom profile for penetration with most rods. Only like 6010 will somewhat look like this, but it, to me, the penetration profile, I don't like. Now keep in mind, quarter inch plate, realistically, is about the limit of what you want to MIG weld and get proper penetration. So I don't really blame, you know, the fact of the process as much as I do, I guess, the situation, the thickness of it. If I really wanted to get penetration on this dual shield flux core or spray arc, would be the way to go. Both of those could really hammer into something like this for thickness. All right, let's do a comparison between the two. I tried to scale these somewhat close to one another and it's not the best, you know, picture, but for a comparison's sake, I would say they all look very, very similar. It looks like the top photo has a little bit more penetration, but really it doesn't. It's just the scaling isn't quite perfect. But yeah, I mean, based on this, I would say that wire feed, I mean, all the way from 290 to 400 provides very similar penetration. Voltage made, I would say, a bigger difference in person than what you see here with just wire feed control. And it's worth noting that as I increased the wire feed, I probably did speed up my travel speed a little bit. So that will also affect the penetration. If I was running the MIG gun on a tractor to where I just dialed in the speed and it moved consistently, I think you would see that the welds got even bigger in physical size, like height-wise, because, you know, as I'm depositing more metal with higher wire feed, I'm going to move slightly faster to keep the weld the same width that I want. But again, if, if I just sat there with the MIG gun and slowed down, I honestly think the penetration would get even worse. In my experience, when you sit and just try and let it fill in, 
what happens is the wire doesn't really get to any kind of depth into the metal. It just keeps depositing on top of what's already there and it doesn't buy you more penetration. So like I said in a previous video to this, I don't know that slowing down would have really changed anything. And I didn't mention it already, but that 290 inch per minute where I weaved it, the penetration I would say is slightly better on that, but not really that significant. Now, when I've done weaves in the past and cut and etched it, not so much on this channel, I did it a couple times just for my own knowledge. I noticed that on a fillet weld, a weave kind of helped with penetration or like the circle ease. I did shoot a video regarding this that I'll probably release pretty soon that kind of does cut and etch where I do the circle ease versus straight in. The results of that were kind of interesting as well, much like you see here where it has an unusual penetration profile, but uh, that'll be for another video. But yeah, I mean, overall looking at this, very consistently the same with a wide range of wire feed. And honestly, the penetration could be better, and that's why I'm going to test 035 wire at higher settings and really see what the difference is. And like I said previous, MIG isn't really known, or the short arc MIG process isn't really known for good penetration as it is on thick plate. And this kind of goes and shows that as well. You know, amperage wise, the machine was probably running somewhere around 160 amps of output. And, you know, the penetration is really not good. And stick welding at 100, 110 amps, 120 with 8th inch 7018 would easily provide a better penetration profile. But this is a MIG welding video, so let's wrap it up. So pretty interesting results, at least from my perspective, and it's kind of what I thought. It's actually sort of a repeat of what we saw with the voltage. The difference is as I increased wire feed, it uh, kind of humped the weld up, but it didn't really wet it out anymore, didn't widen it anymore. It just, uh, I guess, same penetration or very similar, didn't really make a huge difference. Now, I could have used wire feed even higher than I did, but I mean, at that point, you're really going to run into issues running, you know, like 450 inch per minute with that low of voltage. So, you know, it's got to be in a ratio. And also interesting, as I expected, the circle weld had a different penetration profile. And now I've tested that in the past for my own use and I didn't film it back then, but I noticed doing circles because you can stay on that leading edge contributes towards a better overall penetration profile than just going straight in. And that's on thick plate. Now, you know, whether or not you're allowed to do that, depending on what you're welding, really depends. And, you know, these values here will run hot enough if you really try and get that stack of dimes look to where it looks cool, you're probably gonna have no penetration. So I wouldn't advise that, but we can clearly see there's a difference with the same settings and kind of run while staying on the leading edge. It's something to think of, and in the future, I'll test that a little bit more. But we can definitely see, you know, quarter inch plate, not the best penetration with MIG, and I didn't expect that. Now, had I bumped up the voltage to match the wire feed, we would have saw likely some increased penetration. And in the next video, I'm gonna do kind of like five or six different set points on the welder, and we're gonna look at the penetration of it to see how adjusting the two values together, voltage and wire feed, you know, will increase penetration and give an overall better bead and weld appearance. So that's going to be in the next video. Anyways, thanks for sticking around. Enjoy your night. Till next time, guys.